All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High God. So tonight's topic is called Defiled by Women. Defiled by Women. That is tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah 46, verse 9. Let's start there. Isaiah 46, verse 9. As you all know, um, is Women's Day and all that, that demonic day. We're going to shut it down this day in the spirit of the Lord. Read that. Isaiah 49, verse 9. 46, verse 9. 46 and verse 9. Let's start there. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 9. Come on. Remember the former things of old. For I mm. am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So now the Lord is telling us that we must remember the former things of old. The things that were declared unto us and our forefathers in the days of old, from the time of the beginning. Go ahead. Declaring the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So now what we're reading here is, the Most High God, he declares the end from the beginning. You understand? From the beginning, the Lord already declared the things that are going to come to pass in these last days. They are written from the beginning. Our job is to pray to the Lord, to open our eyes so we can see what the Lord is really trying to show us. Read that again, verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 10. Hmm. declaring the end from the beginning and from Come ancient on. times the things that are not yet done say hmm. my counsel shall stand and I will hmm. do all my pleasure all oh, praises to the most high God now watch this give me the book of Jeremiah okay Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22 Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22 you see the Lord declared the end from the beginning you understand and in the beginning when the Lord created man upon the earth our family started with marriage, okay? Read that. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past the man. So now this is the new thing that the Lord created in the earth. A woman shall come past a man, meaning a woman will be equal or above the man. That's what the Lord is saying through the spirit of Jeremiah's here. Read again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter, 20, chapter 31, verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Go ahead. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. So the Lord is saying, as a nation, we, are, we decided to backslide. We went backwards. You understand? So much so that now the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. What is that new thing? A woman compassing a man. A woman being equal or above the man. Disrespecting the black man. Because that's what's going on today. When you examine the women of the other nations, they don't disrespect their men. It's only in our nation, the nation of Israel, where the women disrespect the black man. There's no order in the house. Why? Because the Most High God says, when we backslide, we don't follow his commandments, guess what? This is the new thing that will be created in the earth. That's why the Apostle Paul had to Keep reminding us of what happened in the past. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Watch this. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You know what? Start of verse 1. Start of verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Mm -hmm. He he follows of me, even as I also am of Christ. So the Apostle Paul, he followed after Christ's footsteps. Why? Because Christ, he kept the commandments. He made the laws of God honorable. Give me that in Isaiah. Isaiah 42, 21. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 21. It says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Come on. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see that the Lord, the most Christ, the, the Isaiah is prophesying of Christ. He says, when Christ comes on this earth, on the earth, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. And that's what he did. When Christ walked the earth, he magnified the laws of God and made them honorable because he walked in them. He kept the commandments of the most high God. Okay. So now go back. 
First Corinthians 11 verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Pray. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because Christ magnified the law and made it honorable. The apostle Paul did the same thing. Go ahead. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things mm -hmm. and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So now he says, keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. What were the ordinances he delivered them to us? The commandments. The apostle Paul delivered the ordinances unto us. He says, the way that I delivered them to you, don't add or remove nothing. You understand? Keep them according to how I delivered them to you. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You see that these are the ordinances now. He says, listen, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. He's setting the order. He said, look, these are the ordinances I'm delivering to you. Guess what? Don't add, don't remove. Keep them the way that I delivered them to you and teach them as I've delivered them to you. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. You see that the head of the black woman, the Israelite woman, is the Israelite man. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. You see now, the apostle Paul is giving us the order. Why? Because there was a problems in the church of Corinth. You understand? They were no longer keeping this order. There was no order in the churches. All this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. That's why the apostle Paul had to say this. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 40. Uh -huh. Let all things be done decently and in order. You see that? Let all things be done decently and in order. Why? Because things were not being done decently. They were not being done orderly according to the scriptures. That's why the Apostle Paul had to address that. Go back. First Corinthians 11 verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. You see, so this order right here is how we're going to build our families back up. This is how we're going to set our nation back in order according to the ordinances that was delivered to us. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You see that? So now, but one, one thing that you, you want to notice here is, read verse 3 again. Read verse 3 one more again. Watch this. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Come on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Stop right there. And the, head of and, the what? and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. You see that part right there? The head of the woman is the man. Why is he saying it like this? Notice he didn't say the head of the woman is the husband. He said the head of the woman is the man. So sisters come into the truth. They are not married. Guess who the head? The head is the leadership that is being set over you. That's your head. That's your hedge. You understand? Because why? The reason why the Apostle Paul is written like this, because you can imagine that sisters that are not married, they'll say, no, my head is Jesus Christ. I'm married to Christ. There's no such thing. Because that's what they teach in the Christian church. Is that if you don't have a husband, you're married to Christ. That's not biblical. Read again, verse 3. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man. The head of the, the woman is, is the man. God. The head of the woman, I need you to stay with me. The head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Hold this. Give me Sarah 36. Sarah 36 verse 24. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36 verse 24. Go ahead. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. So you get a wife, you begin a possession. Because when you have a possession, you take care of it. You feed it, you clothe it. You put roof over the possession. All of that, that's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. A help like unto himself. Uh -huh. And a pillar of rest. A pillar of rest. Because this woman, her mind is after your mind. This is husband and wife. Watch this. Go ahead. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Stop right there. So when the, the sister does not have a husband, guess what? She's supposed to have a hedge over him, a man, a leader. So now if she does not have that, she's going to be spoiled. Her mind is going to be spoiled. 
the way she makes decisions is going to be spoiled. Why? Because she's not natural for her to not have a hedge over her. Because it's not biblical. From your father's house, you go to your husband's house. That's how it's always been. That's how that, that's where we went back to. We went back to that. Sisters don't not having a hedge over them, they are spoiled. That's why when you look at their children, their children are out of order. Even they themselves are out of order. They cannot make wise decisions about life uh, situations in life. You understand? They might have a good job. They might get, uh, you know, have a big house and all that. But in terms of their spirits, they have no wisdom. You understand? Why? Because they have, there's no hedge. That's why the, that position, they are spoiled as a position. You understand? So go back. Go back to First Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So now you notice that it says where no hedge is there, the possession is spoiled. That's why today you see independent black woman. You understand? She's spoiled. Why? Because she doesn't have a hedge over her. She says she's independent. You understand? She's, a, she's, a, she's, a, she's an independent black woman, but she's living in a world that was created by men. You cannot make this up. Secondly, she says she's independent, you understand, but she depends on men to be able to, uh, to, to be afforded certain rights, like what? Women's suffrage movement, the feminist movement, all of that, those, 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 um, those freedoms, so-called, were afforded and a, a, a lot, they were allotted to them by men. You understand? Because it is a man's world. We need to understand that. It is what it is. But let me show you something, right? Give me the book of Tobit. Okay, give me Tobit 3. I'm going to show you something with our sister here. Tobit chapter 3. Read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Tobit chapter 3 verse 14. Go ahead. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man. Now, this is our, our sister, Sarah. She says she's pure from all sin with men. That means she's not spoiled. She's not a spoiled possession because if you notice today, the independent black women, they are spoiled. They've been ran through. They've been stretched out by men. Why? Because they are independent. They have no hedge over them. That's why even their daughters that they give birth to, they also become one. They move the way that their mothers move. Why? Because there's no hedge over them. Okay? But this sister right here, guess what? Her father was over her. Read again, verse 14. The book of Tobit, chapter 3, verse 14. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man. She is pure from all sin with man. She's still a virgin. She's not defiled. She's not spoiled. She was not stretched out by men. Go ahead. And that I, and that I never polluted my name. She never polluted her name. She had a good name in Israel. Why? She kept her legs closed. She listened and honored her parents. Go ahead. Nor the name of my father. He did not play the whore in her father's house. Read. In the land of my captivity. In the land of my captivity. So guess what? Our forefathers and foremothers, they did this. In the lands of their captivity. Because this is when during the time of the Assyrians. Today we are in South Africa under the British and the Germans. You understand? And the, and the Dutch. So guess what's happening? We're still supposed to do the same thing that our forefathers did back then. Go ahead. To teach and educate our daughters. Read. I am the only daughter of my father. You see that thing? She's a daddy's girl. This is daddy's little girl. He says, I am the only daughter of my father. Come on. Neither hath he any child to be his heir. Go ahead. Neither any near kinsman. Mm -hmm. Near any son of his alive. Go ahead. To whom I may keep myself for a wife. Stop right there. To whom I may what? To whom I may keep myself for a wife. To whom I may keep myself for a wife. While she was still under her father's roof, guess what she was doing? She was preparing herself to be a wife by the instruction of her parents. So the father, what was the father doing? The father was preparing his daughter for what? For marriage. That's what the father was doing. That's why it says, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. How would she know that? Because the mother was setting the right example for her to become a wife. The father was, was, was educating and guiding her on what it means to be a wife. You understand? That's what we're reading here. This is a pure example of a daddy's little girl. Her focus is what? She's not going to pollute her name. She's pure from all sins with men. 
she's not going to bring shame to her father's house. You understand? And she's learning, she's preparing herself to be a wife. Understand that. So what we read in 1 Corinthians 11, guess what? You are not married. Who's supposed to be over you? The leaders of the church. Why? Because that's what we're reading here. To prepare you for a wife. Watch this. Get that in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Read verse 24. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 24. Come on. Hast thou daughters? Has thou daughters? Yes, we do. We've got daughters in this truth. Come on. Have a care of their body. Have a care of their body. What they wear. What type of clothes do they wear? How must it fit? All of that. We must be, we must know exactly what's going on. Have a care of their body. All of that. Go ahead. And show not thyself cheerful toward them. Because we're not friends with our kids. That's why when we had some Negro at camp, he said, no, you know, he, he's got what? They are in partnership with their kids. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm partnership with my parents. I'm partnership with my kids. He was just talking nonsense. What we're reading here says, show not thyself cheerful towards them. But that part right there when it says, have a care of their body, how they dress, who their friends are, what they are doing. Check their phone. What's happening? Who they are talking to on their phone? You must know all of that. You understand? You must also what? They must hygiene. Practice good hygiene. All of that. That's the job of a father right there. Go ahead. Watch this. This is now get. This is preparation for what? For being a wife. While you're still under your father's roof. Read. Marry thy daughter. You see that? that? Now that's a heavy job right there. He says marry thy daughter. Because before this can take place. Right here, when it says marry their daughter, the job of a father and mother is to prepare their daughter for marriage. Understand that? Is to prepare their daughter for marriage. That means the man will set the right example. The wife will set the right example for the kids, for the daughter. Why? Because the next thing that the father must do is to what? Is to marry their daughters off. Read. And so shall they have performed the weighty matter. Because marriage is a weighty matter. Marriage is not a light matter because why? You must make sure that the brother is right in his mind, the sister is right in their mind. Why? Because when they get together, it's a lifetime. It's forever. That's why when it comes to marriage proving and all that, I'm very skeptical. You understand? I'm, I, I will scrutinize. There's certain things I see and say, no, not yet. He's not ready. She's not ready. You understand? Why? Because it's a weighty matter. It's not a small matter at all. Right? Because the, the, the success of these two these two coming together determines what type of nation will come from them. Are they going to bring forth demonic, abominable kids? Or are they going to bring forth kids that will obey the laws of God and become good example to the next generation? It's a weighty matter. It's about the nation. It's not just about them. Read. But give her to a man of understanding. But give this woman, give your daughter to a man of understanding. That means as a father, I need to be around you. I need to know what type of brother you are. I need to know because brothers be hiding stuff. Brothers be acting, but brothers be putting on a show. Me, I take my time. Why? I need to know what's sitting down there. Why? Because the Lord is saying, but give it unto a man of understanding. This is a weighty matter. You understand? That's why it's very important to make sure that brother that say, I want to prove sister such and such, I need to be around you. You understand? It's not going to be about how you look at, mm -mm. I need to know you, how you deal with situations in your life. How you deal with situations in the congregation. How you deal with men. I'm going to see that thing. Why? Because why? Read again verse 25. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed the weighty matter. Mm -hmm. But give her to a man of understanding. But he says, give her to a man of understanding. This right here, this is a weighty matter. It's not something to play with. Understand that thing. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Now let's understand what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Okay, come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. And the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. You see that thing? And the head of the woman is the man. That's the head over you. You're not married. Guess who's supposed to be over? The leadership. First Timothy 5 and 1. Read that for me. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 1. 
Go ahead. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Mm -hmm. As a what? But entreat him as a father. You see that part right there? It says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. As a father. You brothers and sisters understand. We fathers to you. Don't get it twisted. You understand? Understand that thing. So when the command give is given out, guess what? As a parent, this is what you need to do. Some of you, you don't do it. You're breaking the fifth commandment. You understand? Not understanding that you are being prepared. Because the day when you're going to have children, they're not going to listen to you. Understand that. So you reap what you sow. Understand that thing. Read again, verse 1. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Read. And the younger men as brethren. You see that thing? The younger men as brethren. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Read that again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Mm. But how have you know that the head of every man is Christ? Right. And the head of the woman is the man. Mm -hmm. And the head of Christ is God. So this is God's divine order that the Apostle Paul, he kept emphasizing why? Because there was problems in the churches that he went to teach. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring mm -hmm. his head. Go ahead. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Her husband, if she's married, the leadership, if she's not married. You understand? Go ahead. For that is even all one, as if she was shaven. You see that thing? If she cannot cover her head, let her shave her head. Why? So she can show open defiance to the leadership that the Lord has set over her. You understand? Go ahead. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Mm -hmm. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. You see that thing? It says, because it is a shame for her to be shorn. So it says, why? Let her be covered. Because it's a sign of respect and submission. Go ahead. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Go ahead. But the woman is the glory of the man. The Apostle Paul, he keeps emphasizing this thing because this was the problem in the church. You understand? He says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. That's why we don't cover our heads. You understand? In the spirit of prophecy. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. We are the image, we are made in the image and in the glory of the Most High God, not the woman. We are made in the image and the glory of the Most High God. You understand? He says, but the woman is the glory of the man because she was created out of man. Understand that. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman, uh -huh. but the woman of the man. You see that the man is not of the woman. The man was not created for the woman. But the woman was created for the man. What the Apostle Paul doing here? The Apostle Paul is taking us back to Genesis. Why? Because guess what? The issues that was going on in the churches, guess what? These issues were not being addressed because why? We had not learned the lessons back then from the time of Adam and Eve. So it kept going over and over. It kept happening over and over, causing disorder in marriages. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Mm -hmm. But the woman for the man. Now the Apostle Paul is clearing this out. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. That's what this woman's day is about. That's what this woman's month is about. Why? They want to go against the order that we read in right here. They want to go against this order. And who set up the order that we see today in the world? Satan, the white man. He's the one that is setting up the disorder in our, in our nation. Because they have everything on lock in their nation the white man, the Chinese, the Arabs, and all these other nations outside of us, they have order. But when it comes to us, there's disorder in our nation. Guess what? The whole, the whole point is to do what? Is to disrupt the black family. We need to return back to the Bible so we know where we made our mistakes and how to recover. Okay? Now watch this. Now let's go back. Give me that in um, 
Get go back to Isaiah 46. Read Isaiah 46. Read verse 10 now. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 10. What? Declaring the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And from and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Say, right. my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he declared the end from the beginning. Now we're going to go back to the beginning to see how the Lord declared the end. Get Genesis now. Chapter 2, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So now the Lord is speaking to Adam. He says, Listen, of the tree of oh, is, is, is of every tree of the garden you can eat freely. Okay, let's go back to Genesis 129. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So now the Lord is also is giving, is telling Adam the do's and don'ts. You can eat of all the trees of all in the garden, these ones you can eat. But on this one right here, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou must not eat of it. For in the day you eat of it, Guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. You're going to lose your immortality. That's what he's telling Adam right there. The do's and don'ts. Don't do this. Do this. This is allowed. This is not allowed. Get that in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 verse 19. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Right? That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see that thing? The Lord is giving us two things. He says, the curses, these are blessings. That's the same thing we just read in Genesis. These are curses, these are blessings. The tree, the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. But I'm telling you, you choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see what the Lord is telling us? Get that in Sarak 19. Sarak 19 verse 19. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19 verse 19. Read. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. You see that? The knowledge of the commandment is the doctrine of life. So when you know the commandments of the Most High God, you're going to get life. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Go ahead. And they that do and those and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see that thing? You shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That is what was given to Adam. Listen, if you if you you, you touch the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. Don't touch that. You understand? So you can maintain your immortality. That's what the Lord told him. You understand? Go back. Genesis 2. Read verse 17 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You see that? Thou shalt surely die. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Remember, at this point, Eve was not created. Eve was not taken out of Adam's rib. The Lord is dealing with Adam directly. Understand that. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You see that out of the Adam's rib, the woman was created. Our foremother Eve. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. That's what the word woman means. Out of man, taken from man. That's what the word woman means. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife. Right? And they shall be one flesh. 
You see that thing? Now, Aram, what is doing? What is Aram doing? Aram is, de is defining what marriage is going to look like. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. Aram is prophesying because Aram was a prophet. He is prophesying right here how marriage is going to be from here on out. Read that again. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You see that? And they shall be one flesh. They will be on one accord. They will be on one accord because now they are married. You understand? This is Adam and Eve, husband and wife. They are married and they shall be one flesh. Let me just deal with that for a second. Because it is important, it's pertinent, you understand, to be on one accord. As a congregation and as husband and wife, we must be on one accord. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. You see that? That ye all speak the same thing. That's what it says, and they too shall be one flesh. We must be on one accord. The husband, the, the wife's mind must be according to the husband's mind. That's how it's supposed to be. Not the other way around. The wife's mind must be according to her husband's mind. All this, give me Ecclesiastes 726. Okay, let's understand it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Go ahead. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? You see that? Has thou a wife after your mind? You understand? Your wife's mind, your wife's mind must be up to after your mind. Guess what? You've got daughters. Your the mind, the, the, your, the, the way your daughters think, it must be according to how you think. Because they are learning, they are understanding, okay, this is what daddy wants, this is what daddy don't like. This is all of they are learning all that. Why? They are rehearsing the righteous acts. So when they get married, there's no confusion. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Read. Ask thou a wife after thy mind. Mm -hmm. Forsake her not, but give her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, Has thou a wife after your mind? That's why it says that they too shall be one flesh, because the wife's mind is after the husband's mind. Why? Because the husband's job is to teach the wife. The wife teaches the children. The children understand what daddy wants and what daddy don't want from the mouth of their mother. You understand? When they get to an age, now daddy deals with them. Watch this. But here it says, but don't give yourself over to a light woman. Meaning what? A simple sister who don't give a damn about God's commandments. The Lord says, don't waste your time with that type of woman. Why? Because you and you as, as the man, your mind is after the Lord's mind. Read that in Sirach 6, verse 37. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 37. Go ahead. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord uh -huh. and meditate continually in his commandments. Read. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. You see that? So it says, let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. That's the man's mind. Your mind must be upon the ordinances of the Most High God because the Lord deals with the man directly. You understand? That's why the prophets of the Lord, they are all men. Why? Because that's how it was from the beginning. But we forgot that because of the feminist movement, women's suffrage movement, you understand? We are equal rights, sexual equality, and all of which is all BS. It's not biblical. That's why as a nation, those things, sexual equality, reproductive rights, they only affect our nation. They understand? They are detrimental to the black family, the Israelite family. That's why now as men, the Lord is raising us up to set the nation back in order in the spirit of Christ. You understand? Now, go back. Go back to where it was at, 1 Corinthians 1. Read verse 10 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Go ahead. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that mm -hmm. we all speak the same thing. That we must speak the same thing. So in a marriage, in the congregation, we must all speak the same thing. We must be, we must all be one, one accord. Read. 
and that there be no divisions among you. You see that thing? That there be no divisions among you. Why? What's, what's going to bring divisions? Idolatry. Confusion. You understand? The main thing that is going to bring a, a division in the house is idolatry. That's what's going to bring division in the house, in the congregation, in a marriage. Idolatry. Go ahead. I'm going to deal with that in a sec. Go ahead. But that you be perfectly joined together mm -hmm. in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see that part right there when it says in the same mind and in the same judgment? That means the type of judgments that the wife will make is because she learned that from her husband. So whatever the husband says, listen, do this, do that, or whatever your father says, do this and do that, do it. You understand? Because if I'm not there and you are faced with the situation, you're going to remember the teachings that you received. Is that actually, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do that. Why? You are perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That's a commandment, by the way. This is not a suggestion. This is a command. Understand that. Psalm 25 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. In three things I was purified and stood up mm -hmm. beautiful both before God and men. Come on. The unity of brethren. Mm -hmm. The love of neighbors. A man and a wife that agree together. You see that? A man and a wife that agree together. That right there is what the nations are doing. They are spending billions and billions of dollars to divide the 12 tribes of Israel wherever we are scattered in the lands of our captivities. They are making sure that the black men and the black women, they don't agree together. They're making sure that there's divisions among us. That's where they introduce feminism. That's where they introduce you no know, the independent black women, 50-50. You know, they're introducing all those wicked devices to do what? To divide the black men from the black women. That's why now they, they've isolated the black woman by herself. You understand? Independent, hard-headed, rebellious, stubborn, nasty, obnoxious, loud. You understand? She's by herself right there, and they give her a big position, and they throw money to her. Now when she looks at the black man, she don't see the black man as nothing. You see the point? But now the Lord says, you know what? I'm going to wake the black man first. And when I may wake him up, the black man will set the standard. The black woman has no choice but to humble down to what this Bible says, to meet the standard of the black man, or perish or kiss the missile. That's what the Bible is saying. The most high is a strategist. Draw praise to the Lord this day. Read again, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was purified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Uh -huh. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. That's Bible right there. A man and a wife that agree together. And the first agreement that we have is God's laws. You and I agree on what the Bible says Guess what? We are going to be in the same mind and the same judgment. Amos 3 verse 3. Read that. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Can two work together except they be agreed? No. Two cannot work together if they are not in agreement. What is the agreement we must have? The scriptures. The laws of God, we must all, we must be on one accord. That's what the Most High God is saying. The one thing that is going to bring us together is God's commandments, and we must all be on one accord. There's no the other one thing. There's something different. Another one, mm -mm, that's not going to work. We must be on one accord. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what Adam was prophesying about. That's why the Apostle Paul keep bringing up the, 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 the marriage of Adam and Eve, what happened in the garden. Why? Because we have forgotten the lessons that we've, we have not learned from the mistakes that was made in the garden. The Lord is saying, listen, no, remind them. I'm going to put the spirit upon you to remind them of this thing so they don't make the same mistakes. Go back now. Genesis 2, 24 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife. Right. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. They shall be in one accord. Same mind, same judgment. Read. And they were both naked. The man and his wife were not ashamed. And were not ashamed. So 
when it says they were naked, it doesn't mean they were butt naked. They were without sin. They had not sinned. You understand? That's why the man and his wife and were not ashamed. They were still pure from all sin. You understand? Now, chapter 3, verse 1. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, I want you to pay close attention here. Don't forget, we're still dealing with the work. This goes into the Women's Day, the Women's Month, the feminist movement, worshipping the woman, because that's what this whole thing is about. The Women's Day, Women's Month, and all that, it's all about worshipping the woman. That's what it is. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You see, now, I want you to notice something here in verse 1. They said the serpent was subtle, you understand, than any beast of the field which the Lord made. And he said unto the woman, you see the part right there? The serpent went directly to the woman. The serpent didn't go to Adam. The serpent did not go to Adam. The serpent went directly to the woman. You understand? Why? Hold that. Give me the book of First Peter, okay? First Peter. Let's go to First Peter, because the apostle Peter, he made mention of this thing. First Peter chapter 3, okay? Verse 7. Watch this. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Uh -huh. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. You see that? Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So the honor that is given to the wife, seeing she's the weaker vessel is what? You give honor to her by teaching her God's laws. That's the honor he's talking about. So that she, she what? Her mind is after your mind. That's the honor she's given. Because she's the weaker vessel. So she needs to be fed God's laws. Read. And as being heirs together of the grace mm -hmm. of life. Come on. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. But watch this. You notice that the serpent went directly to the woman. Why? Because the serpent understood she's the weaker vessel. You understand? The serpent understood that thing. But the serpent also understood something else. Jump up. Read verse 5. Watch this. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adored oh, right themselves. Then. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It says, the, read that again. Read this flow for me. Read verse 5 again. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. After this manner, in the old time, the holy woman also, who trusted in God. Stop right there. It says, the holy women also who trusted in God. You see the key word right there? They put their trust in the Most High God. And the way they put their trust in the Most High God, what did they do? Keep reading. Adorn themselves. Mm -hmm. Being in subjection unto their own husbands. That's the key right there. That's why they trusted in God. They are, they, to show their trust in the Most High God, what did they do? They adorn themselves being in subjection to their own husband. That's how they, they showed their trust in the Lord. They showed their trust. They demonstrated their trust in the Lord by being in subjection to their own husband. That was their strong point right there. When you subject yourself to your own husband or you listen to your father and all of that, guess what? That's you trusting in the Lord. Understand that. But guess what? The serpent understood that, listen, Eve, there's, there's a spirit of rebellion in Eve. That's what I'm going to wear. Yes, she's the weaker vessel, but she's not in subjection to her own husband. She don't trust in the Lord. Go back to Genesis 3. Verse 1 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You see that? Now the serpent is quick. The, the serpent is putting doubt in our foremother Eve. Who's the serpent? Get Revelation 12 verse 9. Let's see who's the serpent. The serpent is not talking about a snake. This is a parable. 
is a similitude. Get that? Revelation 12 and 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. Mm -hmm. That old serpent called the that devil. What? That old that what? old serpent. That old serpent. That old serpent. That old serpent. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the devil. The devil means deceiver. Go ahead. And Satan. And Satan means opposer. Opposes what the Lord is saying. Listen even to the way that this man is asking Eve the question. Hey, has God said this? Is he putting doubt in the woman? Read. Because what? He's the deceiver and he's the opposer of what God says. Read. Which deceiveth the whole world. You see that thing? He, this serpent deceived the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So this serpent right here, this is, talk about the spirit of the white man. The white man, he's got the spirit of Satan on him. Now watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. So we understand who the serpent is. Let's get some more. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4. Let's start there. Second book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. Go ahead. Start verse 3, start verse 3. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety. Go ahead. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Mm. Man, the apostle Paul was here. He says, but I fear, lest any, by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety. So the serpent deceived Eve. Remember, the serpent is Satan and the devil. The serpent deceived Eve and opposed the teachings that, that, that Adam taught her, her, his wife. Because Adam taught Eve what the Lord has said. But now the serpent put doubt in, the, in, in our foremother Eve. You understand? It says, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Why? Because it's simple in Christ. Trust in the Lord and be in by being in subjection to your own husband. Eve did not go that route. Why? Because she did not trust in the Lord. She didn't. You understand? She knew what she was supposed to not she was supposed to do and not to do, but she chose different. Why? She didn't trust in the Lord. How? By being in subjection to her own husband. So her lack of trust in the Lord, it was proved by her listening to the serpent. You see the point? So keep keep reading. Verse 4. You know what? No. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Uh -huh. For such are false apostles. You see that? So she, he was a false apostle. Read. Deceitful workers. Uh -huh. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Watch the next verse. This is the point. Go ahead. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see that thing? He says, don't marvel. Because Satan himself, talk about the serpent in Genesis 3. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The angel of light meaning what? Wisdom. He also came with wisdom to the woman. He transformed himself into an angel of light. Meaning what? I've got wisdom too. Go back to Genesis 3. Read verse 1 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Come on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Right. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So I want you to notice something here. You see in verse 2, the woman is repeating, verse 2 and 3, the woman is repeating what Aram was commanded. Now, that means, that's letting you know, when Adam was being given these commands, he was not created yet. So, letting you know, what did Adam do? 
Genesis 2.24, read that again. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and mm -hmm. shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. They will be on one accord. The wife's mind will be after the husband's mind. Why? Because the husband's job will be to teach the woman the laws of God. That's what Adam did to his wife. He taught Eve the commandments. That's why here the woman is repeating the things that was told to Adam. Because what did Adam do? Adam set his house in order. Now read that again. Genesis 3, read verse 3 and 2. Verse 3, verse 2 and 3 together. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Stop right there. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. What is she talking about? Genesis 1. Get that. Genesis 1.29. This is what Eve she's talking about. Okay. The book of Genesis chapter 1 is 29. Go ahead. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and mm -hmm. every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. To you it shall be for meat. This is the what? The diet, the vegan diet that was given to us. Go back to Genesis 3. Read verse 3 again now. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Don't eat of the fruit of that is the midst of the tree of the garden, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. That's the same thing that was given to Adam. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You see what the serpent is doing? Putting doubt in our foremother Eve. Why? Because our foremother Eve, guess what? The serpent was able to recognize that there's rebellion in this woman. You understand? She don't, she don't, be, she don't, and she don't, she, she's not in agreement with what her husband is teaching. She don't like that. Now the serpent second is exploiting that situation. That's what's going on here. Why? Because Eve did not trust in the Lord. Because she did not what? She did not submit herself to her husband completely. She did not. That's why Satan was able to enter into the house through her. Read. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, uh -huh. then your eyes shall be opened. Go ahead. And ye shall be as gods, mm. knowing good and evil. Now that's heavy right there. I want to show you something with this verse. Read it again, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Stop right there. Stop, Stop right there. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, you see what you see what the serpent is saying to the woman? It says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye, and ye shall be as gods. Ye shall be as gods. Meaning both of you, you are going to be gods on this earth. That's what the serpent is telling Eve. You see this? It says, ye, both of you, you are going to be as gods. Adam was already on that God level. But the serpent is telling Eve, listen, the both of you now, Again, now, right now, the two of you, one of you is just is a God and you are not. But when I give you this knowledge, both of you will be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that? You men see this? Yes, sir. That's what's going on here. That's what's going on right here. Watch this. Give me, give me the book, give me wisdom of Solomon 10 and 1. Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. She preserved the first form father of the world. The she is wisdom. Wisdom preserved the first formed father of the world. That's Adam. Go ahead. That was created alone. Uh -huh. And brought him out of his fall. Read. 
and gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. Guess what? Adam was God on earth. He was already on that God level. But the serpent is telling the wife, say, listen, both of you are going to be as gods. Adam was already on that God level. But the reason why the serpent is presenting this is because of what? Eve wanting to be equal or above her men. That was the issue. And the serpent was able to recognize that thing. You understand? The serpent was able to recognize that. Watch this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, right? Wisdom of Solomon 2. You know what? Mm, I'm jumping ahead. Give me 2nd Ezra 6, verse 54. Let's just read that. 2nd Ezra 6. Read verse 54. Mm, read that. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Go ahead. And after this, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, mm -hmm. of whom come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen, you see that? Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So Adam was a God already. He was already on that God level. You understand? And the serpent knew that, obviously. That's why she went, he went directly to the woman. You understand? To say, listen, I, the, the, the way for me to disrupt the rulership of this man, I have to get to the woman. You understand? If I want to destroy the rulership of this man, being a God on this earth, I need to deal with the woman. If I can deal with the woman, the woman will be able to do what? To destroy this man from within the family. You see that thing? Then the whole kingdom will fall. Understand that? Okay? Now, you notice now when you look at movies like your Superman, now the Supergirl, where do you think that come from? Ye shall be as gods. You've got Thor now. Now you've got, a, you've got a female counterpart of Thor. Hmm? She was saying, no, I'm the mighty Thor. What the hell is this? That's what we're reading. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You understand? The Hulk. Now the Hulk is a woman. You understand? The Black Panther that's coming up, they say now the Black Panther will be a woman. Guess what? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's all the serpents do. The white man is doing this. He's doing all this. Understand that. But he has everything in order in his house. But when it comes to in our houses, guess what? He's disrupting all that. Who is the serpent using? He's using the black woman to do it. Now the serpent is using the black woman to destroy the black man from within. Now as we build in the 12 tribes of Israel in the spirit of Christ, who's the number one enemy that we meet on the streets? The black woman. She is the main one that is always going against what the Bible says. Especially when we have to deal with marriage and the order of marriage and the hierarchy that happens in marriage and the roles and responsibility that goes with marriage. The black women don't accept that. She's saying hell to no to hell with that. She don't want to hear that. Why? Because she has been weaponized against us. Understand that. The black woman has been weaponized by the, by the white man against us. Tell you straight, it is what it is. So we have a fight upon us, brothers. We have a fight, and we love our sisters, but we are going to deal with, with them according to the scriptures, not according to the wisdom of the world, according to what God says. Understand that? Now, let's go back to Genesis 3. Genesis 3, read verse 5 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So now the serpent, what is he doing? The serpent is enticing this woman. She's, he's enticing our foremother Eve, because the husband is not there. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now watch this. You see verse 6 right here? This right here is the beginning of the feminist movement. Understand that? 
This right here is the beginning of the feminist movement because from verse one down, the woman, she's complaining to the serpent. The woman is complaining to the serpent. The serpent said, don't worry, I got a solution for you. You understand? The woman is complaining to the serpent. The serpent is like, now if I got her where I wanted. I'm now going to present an offer that she cannot refuse. Read again verse 6. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Stop right there. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Remember, we just go through reading that the tree, that the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. But in verse 6, all of a sudden, the tree is good for food. You see that? Verse 6, the tree now is good for food. Because now, she, remember, she has to think about this stuff. Mm, the impact of this. If I take this, I learn this, I also got some wisdom. Now I also have something to say. Now, Leo, you see that? That's what's going on here. Read again verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. It was something that was beautiful to look at. You understand? It was, it was good for food, meaning for knowledge, and pleasant to the eyes. Stop right here. Give me First John 2, 16. It was pleasant to the eyes. Watch this. Let's go to John, chapter 2, verse 16. You know what? Start at verse 15. Because what the serpent is presenting, the serpent is presenting an alternative, an alternate reality to this woman. Watch this. Read it. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For any man that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He said, if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Remember what we read in First Peter. It says, holy women also of old who trusted in God adorn themselves being in subjection to their own husband. You see, Eve, she did not trust in the Lord. That's why it says, if any man loved the world, the love of the father is not in him. The love of the father was not in our foremother Eve at this point. You understand? Because she loved the world that the, that the serpent presented to her. Next verse, go ahead. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, you see that? The lust of the flesh. She lusted after that. Go ahead. And the lust of the eyes. That's it right there. The lust of the eyes. Remember what it says. It says, it was pleasant to the eyes. You understand? It was pleasant to the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Come on. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. That's why it says, and the teeth was good for food. That's the, that's the knowledge. That's why today our sisters... They do, they, they do, they have their degrees. They've got their PhDs and all that. And don't get it twisted. I'm not saying sisters cannot study. I'm not saying sisters cannot have degrees. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that when they learn that, they think they are on some level. They think now they are better than they are better or above the black man. They look down on the black man. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. The pride of life. I'm better than you. I'm a PhD. You cannot tell me what to do. I am more than you. So therefore, I wear pants in the house. That's nonsense. That's not biblical. Hierarchy and responsibility in the house has nothing to do with money, but it's got everything to do with what roles and responsibility that was given to the husband and the responsibility that was given to the wife. And everybody must what? Everybody must accept their roles and responsibility and what? And fulfill those roles. That's what marriage is. That's what the Most High God says. It's got nothing to do with your PhD. To hell with your PhD if it's going to disrupt the family. You see the point? Read again, verse 16. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust mm -hmm. of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, Wait. and the pride of life is yeah. not of the Father. Hold on. And the pride of life, and the pride of life, the pride of life, that's what, the tree was good for food, and tree to be desired to make one wise. That's the pride of life. Go ahead. Is not of the father, uh -huh. but is of the world. He's not of the father, but he's of the world. He's not of the father, but he's of Satan. 
That's what the, that's what the apostle John is saying. Is not of the Father, but it's of Satan. Understand it. Is not of the Father, but it's of Satan. So go back, Genesis 3, read verse 6 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, go ahead. and a tree to be desired to make one wise. You see that? The tree to be desired to make one wise. The tree to be desired to make one wise. So it was beautiful to behold, then the tree, it, was, it, was, it was something to be desired. So guess what? Hmm. I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to do it. Jump down to verse 16. We're going to go back to verse 6. Genesis 3, 16. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Thy what? Thy what? And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Thy desire. Thy desire. Thy desire. And thy desire shall be to thy what? And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Thy desire, meaning Eve's desire. Our foremother Eve's desire shall be to her husband, Adam. Go ahead. And he shall rule over thee. You see the problem right there? So Eve didn't want this. Her desire was not to her husband, and she did not want Adam to rule over her. So she decided, I'm going to seek knowledge elsewhere so I can compete with my husband. Remember, Adam was a god on earth. Adam was already famous. Adam has status. Everybody reverenced and feared this man. Eve wanted the same thing. And the serpent exploited that because the serpent was able to see that that's what this black woman wants. And that's the same thing today. Our sisters have not learned the lesson from the Genesis. They have not learned what their foremother did. They have not learned from that mistake. They are repeating the same thing. And now they want the black men to do the same thing. We're not doing that. Not today in these last days. Not in the spirit of Christ. We're not doing that. No. You understand? So go back up to verse 6. One more again. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise. You see that? The tree to be desired to make one wise. Her desire is only supposed to be to her husband. But she looked at this tree, she's like, listen, this tree, I desire this tree because this tree is going to make me wise. Not my husband. But this particular tree is going to make me wise. Watch this. Hmm. Jump back down to verse 16 again. I have to stay on this. I have to stay on this. The spirit is on. I have to stay on this. Read it. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. And to the woman he said, I will hmm. greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and your husband will rule over you. Now watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Read that for me. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. Go ahead. For God is not the author of confusion. You see that? The most High God is not the author of confusion. He is not the author of confusion. Because what's happening in Genesis 3, between the serpent and the, our foremother Eve, is confusion going on. You understand? Go ahead. But of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So now, is the serpent bringing peace into the house? No. The serpent is bringing confusion in the house. Remember, it says what? They too shall be one flesh. What is the serpent doing? The serpent is causing division in the house through what? Idolatry. I'm going to deal with that. Jump down to verse 30, 34 now. Come on. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Stop right there. You see that part when it says, let the woman keep silence in the churches? The first church, where is the church? The church begins in your house. 
So the church that was in the garden was the household of Adam and Eve. That was the church. You understand? That was the church. The church begins in your house. That was the church. It says, let your women keep silence in the churches. What does that mean? They must learn in silence. You understand? With all submission. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, meaning what? To teach the men. Eve, her, her, her order and her responsibility, her role, is not to teach our forefather Adam. That was not her role. That's why it says, it is not permitted unto them to speak, meaning what? Teach. They're not supposed to teach the men. They're supposed to teach the children. Go ahead. But they are commanded to be under obedience. Mm -hmm. As also said the law. They are commanded to be under obedience, meaning under submission to what? To the law that Adam was set in the house. Just like Adam was given the command, Adam took the command and taught his wife, Eve. That was, they two shall be one flesh, because at that point, there was one accord, there was one flesh. There was in one accord. Same mind, same judgment. They all understood what was supposed to be done. Their roles and the responsibility in the marriage. They both understood that. Watch this. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything. If this woman, the wife will learn anything. Go ahead. Let them ask their husbands at home. But that's not what our foremother Eve did. Our foremother Eve said that it says, it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. You see that? It says, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Not listen to the serpent. But she completely went against that order. Go ahead. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. It is a shame for women to teach in the churches, to teach in the house, to teach the men. It is a shame. It's not biblical. Go back. Genesis 3. Read verse 6 again now. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant for the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, you see that? And it, it says, the tree to be desired to make one wise. This tree that she, it, it says what is going to make one wise, watch this, this tree. Give me that in uh, Mark 8, 24. Mark 8, verse 24. Let's read that. What is this tree making reference to? The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 24. Read. Right. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. You see that? I see men as trees walking. Go back to Genesis 3 verse 6. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Meaning this man was good for knowledge. Meaning this man is coming with knowledge. Remember it says, for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. Because that's what was going on here. When Eve looked at this man, it's like, I'm going to learn wisdom from this man. Not my husband, but I'm going to learn from this man right here. Go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And if this man brought wisdom that was pleasant for me to look at. Read. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Uh -huh. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Stop right there. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Give me that in Hosea chapter 10. Let's get it. Hosea 10 verse 13. The book of Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Go ahead. Ye have plowed wickedness. Mm -hmm. Ye have reaped iniquity. Come on. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. That's what our foremother Eve did. She ate the fruit of lies. She ate the fruit of lies. Go ahead. Because thou didst trust in thy way, uh -huh. in the multitude of thy mighty men. That's what Eve trusted. Eve trusted in the multitude of the mighty men that were not of the lineage of Adam even. You understand? The other nations. She trusted upon them. Why? Why did she, eat? Why did she take the fruit of lies and eat it? Why, why was that tree that came before her, which, which is the man, the serpent, to offer her the wisdom, quote unquote. That was the fruit of lies. But why did she do it? Get that in Wisdom of Solomon 2.23. Because guess what? 
when you look at today, what's happening today with the feminist movement, this Women's Month, Women's Day, and all of that, it's all a lie. And it was the lie that was taught to the black woman. You understand? Feminist movement. No, you must be independent from your man. Your man is oppressing you. Whenever has the black man oppressed the black woman? Because we've been in slavery together. We've been oppressed in apartheid together. We've been lynched, raped, robbed, and murdered, and all of that. When has, has the black man ever oppressed the black woman? When? When in history has that ever taken place? Hmm? You understand? When? When has that happened? Because why? The white woman wanted certain rights, you understand, to be equal with her men, and those rights were granted unto her only because she recruited black women into the feminist movement for the numbers. And when she got what she wanted, she still kept her men, but the black woman separated herself from her black man. Now she's independent and alone, and she's a single parent. She's been worn out, stretched out by multiple men. She's a baby mama, but she's got a PhD. That's the problem we have today. You see the point? Now read that for me. Rosal Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. 23. Start with 23. Yes, sir. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. For God created man to be immortal. You see that? God created man to be immortal, to live forever. Go ahead. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see that? He made man to be an image of his own eternity. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil, mm -hmm. then death into the world. Stop right there. But he says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Now I want you to think about this right here. God created man to be mortal, right? And made this man to be an image of his own eternity. Because this goes back to what? Let us make man in our image. You understand? But now he says, but however... Through envy of the devil came death into the world. Whose envy? Eve's envy. Because Eve envied the devil, and her envying the devil, she ended the, 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 the she ended immortal life. You cannot make this up. I want you men to think about this, sisters too. Read that again. Read verse 23 again. I want this thing to hit home. Read it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Come on. For God created man to be immortal mm -hmm. and made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see that? And made, God, made Adam to be an image of his own eternity. But because the, the black woman, our foremother Eve, she envied the devil. You understand? What did she do? Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil mm -hmm. came death into the world. You see that? Through envy of the devil, because Eve envied the devil. What did she envy? She envied the wisdom that the devil had. And guess what happened? She learned of all that to end immortality. You think she didn't know that this was going to end immortality? Of course she knew. But because why? Because why? Women are emotional. They make permanent decision on a temporary feeling. I want to be, I don't want this man to tell me what to do no more. You understand? I don't want him. He's telling me what to do. Hey, we are Bible bullies. I guess that's what they tell us now. They say we are bullies when we tell them, listen, do this. Don't do that. I don't want that. I want this. According to as it is written, guess what? She was like, to hell with this. I don't want to feel like this no more. I'm going to listen to Satan. And if it, even if it means I'm going to end immortality, I'm going to do it, of course. Think about this thing. Think about it. That's why women are not leaders. Women are not created to be leaders. They are created to be what? Weaker vessels to support the men. That's it. Because if women lead, guess what's going to happen? This is what took place when women was in the front. Immortal life was cut off. Get that in Sarah 25, 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25 and 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Mm. And through her, we all die. 
You see that of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through the woman, we all die. All Im immortal life was cut. Immortality was cut off. Why? Because of what, what the woman did, because of the envy of the black woman. You see the point? So not only did she envy the serpent, but she envied her husband also. Because remember, Adam was already on that God level. Adam owned, he, he, he owned the whole earth. So instead of saying, listen, my husband is in, is, is in power. Therefore, I'm empowered. I'm good. Everything is all good. No, no, no. She wanted more. She wanted to be equal to him or above him. So she, not only did she envy the devil, but she envied her husband. And she realized that, listen, there's order here when it comes to my husband. So because I'm not going to be equal to him, you understand, based on this order and this response, the hierarchy that the Lord has said, I have to go outside of my husband and learn something elsewhere and bring it to him so I can destroy this man. It is what it is. Now, go back to Genesis 3. Read verse 6 now. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Great. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and Go a ahead. tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did the eat. fruit of lies. The fruit of lies, she took the fruit of lies. Go ahead. And did eat. Uh -huh. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Now, I'm going to deal with that last part in a second. It says, she took off the fruit thereof and did eat. She learned it. Because remember, it was pleasant to the eyes. So what did she learn from this man? What did she learn from the serpent? Let's get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Let's get there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Read verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Go ahead. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Mm -hmm. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. So you see that is that the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. Whose life was corrupted? Adam's life. By who? By the woman. Because God created men to be mortal. But Adam's life was no longer immortal because of what? Because of what Eve, our foremother, did. You understand? Verse 27. Verse 27. For the worshipping of idols not to be named mm -hmm. is the beginning. The so cause is the beginning. Is the beginning, the beginning, just Genesis, the beginning, come on. The cause mm -hmm. and the end of all evil. You see that? For the worshipping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil on earth. So what was the beginning? What was the sin in the garden? It was idolatry. Worshipping of other gods. You see that thing? That was the sin in the garden, idolatry. You understand? Let's get specific. Get that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. The fruit of lies, idolatry. So what was the idolatry? You understand? That Eve learned from the serpent. Let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Read that. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when mm. thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars. Uh -huh. You see that? This is astrology now. Astrology. You lift up your eyes unto heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon and stars, constellation. You understand? Astronomy. Which now also delves into what? Delves into astrology, horoscopes, star signs. You understand? Go ahead. Even all the host of heaven mm -hmm. should us be driven to worship them. Go ahead. And serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. 
So what's happening here is what was brought to our foremother Eve was these things, worshiping of the host of heaven, moon, stars, and the sun, you understand, to worship these things, to break the first commandment in the beginning of what? The fall of man. Because these are the things that she said, listen, I want to learn all these things. That's why when you notice today, they say women in IT, women in engineering, women in science and all of that. A lot of the times, because I was watching this documentary when Elon Musk was taking people to, to space and all that, guess who was in there? The, the black woman was in there as the first black woman as a civilian to go to space. You understand? Back to the garden all over again. You understand? So these things have not changed. The same nations that was back then, they are back today and they are doing the same garbage. That's what the Lord is telling us right here. You understand? Now, go back to Genesis, okay? For Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Right. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Right. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Now that part right there. You see what's happening here? And she, 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 she learned it. You understand? And when she understood everything about it, it says now she presented these philosophies to her husband. You understand? And he did eat. Hmm. So was it, what is happening here? You see right here, Adam became a symbol. Right here. This is, the, this is the problem right here. This is where Adam fell. He fell right here. This is where he became a symbol. Right here. You understand? Because now, the, the, the worshipping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil, right? Watch this. Hmm. Now, Adam, you see what's going on here? It's called role reversals. This what you just noticed here is called role reversals. Adam, instead of being the leader and the teacher of the house, now the woman, she's the one that's doing it. That's why she brought the knowledge to Adam now. You understand? I also got something. You understand? Yes, you taught me all this, but I, yeah, yeah, I get that. But I have knowledge also. I'm going to give you some knowledge. I've got wisdom. I'm going to show you. You see that? That's the same thing today. Lesbianism. The feminist movement. 50-50. Hmm? Women can be equal and above the men. That's the same thing that is being pushed on us today. Women's Day, Women's Month, Women's Liberation Movement, all of that. Guess what? It's all dating back to Genesis, the fall of men, when the roles of the house were reversed, when what women will compass a man. Go back to Jeremiah 31, verse 22. One more again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Mm -hmm. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. You see that? A woman shall compass a man. 50-50. We can do it. We can do it better. That's what they are saying. That's what they are telling them. That's what is being pushed in the earth right now. You understand? And guess the black woman, she's so power hungry, she will make a deal with the devil. However deal she's going to make, just so that she can be in that position to be telling men what to do. Understand that. That's why she didn't care, the de didn't care who she made the deal with as long as she, she was in that position of power. She didn't care if it meant or there's no more immortality. She made the deal anyway. You see the point? That's why today the black woman will go to the abortion clinic and kill the baby and have no remorse whatsoever and go back to the club. She'll give birth to a baby and throw it in the ocean and go back to the club and say, I'm not ready to be a mother. So you would rather throw the baby, a baby that is alive and throw it in the ocean, throw it in the canal. The baby will be floating in there drowning. Throw the baby in the dustbin. You see the point? If it means she will still want to live her life, she'll kill that baby without, without no care in the world. That's what's going on today. 
the, 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 our, the, the so-called leaders in the black community, they don't want to talk about that. Why? Because they're scared. You know why? Because they've been, they've been defiled by women. Now they worship the woman. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what's going on right now. You understand? Watch this. Now watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 14. I'm going to show you something. Because of idolatry, this is what has happened now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and verse, read verse 27. I'm going to show you the worshiping of idols. This is what it caused in the marriage. Read it. Verse 27. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 27. Mm -hmm. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. You see that? The worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning the cause and the end of all evil. Now jump up to verse 26 so we can see, so we see the impact, you understand? We can read verse 24. We see the impact of idolatry in a marriage. Here's what happens. Read verse 24. Verse 24. Come on. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Stop right there. You see that? Because of worshiping of idols, because of idolatry, worshiping the woman is as they kept neither lives nor their marriages any longer undefiled. Because idolatry will bring, will defile the marriage. You understand? Idolatry will defile the marriage. That's why when a woman dresses like a man, that marriage is defiled. Because now we don't know who's the head of the house. The minute the woman dresses like their husband, there is no order in that house. Therefore, that marriage is defiled. Understand that. Therefore, the children also will be defiled because of what idolatry. The black woman wanting to be worshipped. Read. But either one slew another treacherously. Now, they, they, now they, are, they are killing one another treacherously. That goes into abortions and all that. Go ahead. Or grieve them by adultery. Now they are stepping outside of the marriage. You understand? My body, my choice. I give that's the garbage that we're hearing now. My body, my choice, that's garbage. That's not biblical. My body, my choice, that means I have the right to kill my baby because I'm the one that is carrying the baby. That's murder. Um, read verse 24 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Come on. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Mm hmm but either one slew another treacherously or grieved him by adultery. You see that? Or grieved him by adultery. Why? Going outside of the marriage because of idolatry. Why? Because the black woman thinks, I, I'm, I'm equal to the man. I'm not going to listen to what he says. Even though you come with the scriptures as it is written, he's saying to hell with that. Because Adam came with the laws, came with the commandments, came with the order directly from the most High God. She rejected that and gave place to the devil. You understand? Verse 26. Come on. Verse 26, mm -hmm. disquieting of good men. You see that? Disquieting of good men. Go ahead. Forgetfulness of good terms. Forgetfulness of good terms. Instead of keeping the laws of God, they went outside of that. Read. Defiling of souls. Mm -hmm. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. That's why you see today, they say men can be women, women can be men. There's surgeries now. You understand? Go ahead. Disorder in marriages. That's it right there. Disorder in marriages. Read that part again. It says what? Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. That's what the that's the effect of idolatry. Disorder in marriages. Because Adam and Eve's marriages was in disorder, was, was, was not in order anymore. Why? Because now Eve was now teaching the man. Eve was now teaching Adam. The roles were reversed in the house because she what she listened to the serpent and brought that garbage back into the house. Disorder in marriages. That's what she did because of idolatry. Read. Adultery. Adultery. Come on. And shameless uncleanness. And shameless uncleanness. Because of what? Idolatry. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 6. One, one more again. Book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, come on, 
and that it was pleasant to the eyes mm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and came also unto her husband with her and he did eat. You see that? This is now is called the fall of man. Why? Because Adam listened to his wife. Adam listened to his wife. There was disorder in their marriage now. Why? Because now the roles are reversed. Adam is now listening to his wife, not the other way around. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Genesis. Okay, Genesis 3 verse 17. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Because at this point, Adam now is defiled by his woman. Adam right here is defiled by his woman. Read verse 17. Watch this. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see what the Lord is telling Adam? He says, Because you hearkened unto the voice of your wife, because you listened to your wife, and I told you, don't listen to your wife. You the head of the house. Why are you listening to your wife? Why are you getting advice from your woman? The Lord is saying, because you hearken unto the voice of your wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, curse is the ground for thy sake. Now you're going to be doing nine to five. You understand? Now you're going to be building skyscrapers. You're going to go back and live in the ghettos. That's what we have now. You understand? In, it says what? In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Now the black man is at the bottom. We're struggling. Why? Because of listening to the woman. So today, when you see all these simps today, weak black men who cannot stand up to the woman, guess what? That's the reason why today you see black women are empowered. Why? Because the black man does not want to take up his rightful place, pick up this Bible and set his house in order. He's scared. He's afraid. Not this black man. Oh, hell no. We are not going to repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers did. No. Watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something this day. Give me 2 Esther chapter 7, verse 48. 2 Esther chapter 7, verse 48. Watch this. Because what is happening here is our forefather Adam, guess what? What he did, not only it didn't only affect him, but he affected all the seed of Adam that come after him, which is us today, the sons of God, the children of Israel after the flood. Read it. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 48. Mm -hmm. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? What did you do, Adam? Why did you listen to your woman? Go ahead. For though it was thou that sinned, mm. thou art not fallen alone. No, it's not. This only did not affect you only. Watch this. Go ahead. But we all that come of thee. You see that? But we all that come of you. Meaning what? The sons of God. The direct descendants of Adam, us. Guess what? We now are covered with the same thing. We are no longer getting immortality. We are not immortal anymore. Now we have to work tooth and nail every day. You understand? To keep God's commandments so we can get our kingdom back. That's what we're reading here. Now, watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 14. No, no, no. Before we get there, let me share my screen, okay? Because what we just read now is this right here, this is, at this point, Adam was defiled by Eve. The philosophies that came with Eve, our poor mother, to bring disorder in that marriage. Watch this. Let me share my screen. I want you to read this right here. Reading from wikipedia.org. Mm -hmm. International Women's Day. Read. International Women's Day is a global holiday celebrated annually on March 8th to commemorate the cultural, political, and socioeconomic achievements of women. So now... Women's Day that we have to we have in South Africa in August and all that. Guess what? This is the umbrella of it. This International Women's Day. Guess what? 
the women's day here in Mzanzi on the 9th of August, they get it from here. Go ahead. It is also a focal point in the women's rights movement. You see that in the women's rights movement, come on. Bringing attention to issues such as gender equality. Stop right there. You, you see what women, you see what women's day is about? Gender equality. Where did we just read that? Genesis 3 verse 6. You shall, Genesis 3 verse 5. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can be equal or above the man. That's what we're reading here. There's no such thing as gender equality in the Bible. The men and women are not equal. The man is the head. The woman submits to the man. There's no gender equality in the Bible. But that's what Women's Day is about. Women's Month. You see that thing? Women's liberation movement and all that. It's all about what? Wanting the men and the women to be equal. It's impossible. It's not realistic. You understand? Read that part again. Bringing attention to what? Bringing attention to issues such as gender equality. Mm -hmm. Reproductive rights. That goes into abortion. Yeah, that goes into abortion, by the way. Go ahead. And violence and abuse against women. Now, watch this. Let's go to the reproductive. You know what? Let me start with gender equality. Read that. The women, gender the women, equality. Hold on. Women's Day, women's rights and all that, is got the, the subcategories is what? Gender equality, reproductive rights, and so forth. So let's see what this is. Gender equality. Read that. Gender equality, also mm -hmm. known as sexual equality. Stop right there. You see that thing? Gender equality is also known as what? Sexual equality. There is no such thing in the Bible. This is all the serpent's doing. From the time of Genesis, guess what? It's still going on today. 2022. They are still pushing the same garbage. Go ahead. Oh, equality of the sexes. There is no such thing as equality of the sexes. There is no such thing. But go ahead. Is the state of equal ease of access to resources and opportunities, regardless of gender. That also is not possible. It's not realistic. The world that we live in was built by us. And the rights that the women have today was granted to them by us. You understand? The skyscrapers, the bridges, you understand? These tall buildings, all these machinery that you see today, whether industrial, engineering and all, medical and all, it was all built by men. You understand? So they live in a world that is created by men because it is a man's world. Understand that? I'm not being misogynist. No, 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 no. I'm being biblical. Strictly biblical. You know, I'm not going to apologize for that thing. No. So what you're seeing here is all is not realistic. You understand? All this feminist movement and all that, they were given their rights, they were given by men. You understand? Read. Including economic participation and decision They cannot do that. Economic, but listen, the hard subjects, the hard sciences and all that, you primarily see men in there. You understand? Read. And the state of valuing different behaviors. The state of valuing different behavior. <laughs> Go ahead. Aspirations. Yeah. And needs equally regardless of gender. That thing is not realistic. This feminism thing is a, is, is a figment of their imagination. You understand? Go ahead. Gender equality is the goal. Mm. While gender neutrality and gender equity are practices and ways of thinking that help in achieving the goal. You see that thing? It is gender neutrality and gender equity. The gender neutrality, now they are, they are going into, you no, know, gender is a social construct. I can think they, him, him, what, they, they, there is not a she, it's an it now. Hmm? They say gender is a social construct. Listen, give me the book of Mark real quick. This kingdom gotta go. This kingdom that's ruling over us, this kingdom got to go. Yeah. Hmm. This kingdom must fall, yeah, definitely. This, ki this kingdom must fall, brothers. We must keep these laws for this kingdom to fall to the ground. It's got to go. This is crazy. Give me Mark 10. Read verse 6. 
book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 6. Go ahead. But from the beginning of creation, God mm -hmm. made them male and female. You see that? God made them male and from the beginning of creation. We just read it in Genesis. God made them male and female. So there's no such thing as gender equality, gender neutrality, gender equity. There's no such thing. All of this is just what, this is a, this is fairy tales here. You understand? Read again. Gender equality is what? Gender equality is the goal. Mm -hmm. While gender neutrality and gender equity are practices and ways of thinking that help in achieving the goal. You see that thing? So it's all imaginations of men. It's not reality. It's not what God has set out. You understand? Read. Gender parity, which is used to measure gender balance in a given situation. There's no such thing. There's no gender balance. Read. Can aid in achieving gender equality, but mm -hmm. is not the goal in and of itself. You see that thing? They're, they, they're just confusing you. They are telling you, listen, we want men and women to be equal, which is not biblical. Read. Gender equality is more than just equal representation. Mm, go ahead. It is strongly tied to women's rights. You see that thing? Worshipping the woman. Gender equality is strongly tied to women's rights. Meaning what? Worshipping the woman. Being equal or above the men. That's what this, this the whole thing is about. This whole thing is about being equal or above the men. And more so above the men. That's what they are pushing. Read. And often requires policy changes. Mm. As of 2017, the global movement for gender equality has not incorporated the preposition of gender besides women and men or gender identities outside of the gender binary. You see that? Is it the preposition of genders besides women and men? Gender identities, because now they are questioning that. Or no, male and female, that's, that, that's a social construct. Gender binary. You see that? So now they are bringing all manner of confusion into this. Guess where? This goes all the way back to Genesis, the third chapter. Understand that. What the white man has been doing back then, he's doing it today still. He has not stopped the devil that he is. You understand? And guess who's been weaponized against the black man? The black woman, of course. And the children that the black woman gives birth to. And she's all by herself because there's no hedge. So her mindset, the way she thinks, it's all spoiled because there's no hedge over it. The heads that would be, bring the scriptures to him. There's no such. So when we bring the scriptures, they say we are misogynists. Listen, I'm going to deal with that nonsense. Now, they say reproductive rights. Let's read that now. <clears throat> reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. Reproductive rights are legal rights and freedoms relating to reproduction and reproductive health that vary amongst countries around the world. Go ahead. The World Health Organization defines reproductive rights as follows. Come on. Reproductive rights rest on the recognition of the basic right of all couples and individuals to decide freely and responsibly the number, spacing, and timing of their children, mm. and to have the information and means to do so. This thing is called Planned Parenthood. That's what it's called. Planned Parenthood. Guess what? This is just code way to say, we want to kill your babies. That's all they are saying. And when it says couples and individuals to decide freely, the couples, the couples, that's, this right here is a smoke screen. Individuals, they are making reference to the black women deciding on my body, my choice. That's, they, they are not talking about couples here. Because in the couples, the main person that makes the decision whether they want to have a child or not is the woman. The man has no say. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. And the right to attain the highest standard of sexual and reproductive health. You see that? And the right to attain the highest standard of sexual and reproductive health. What does this mean? The right to kill my baby when I want. Even when I'm married, because that's what we was reading when we we're reading abortion in South Africa. Where they say that, listen, if you are married, the wife can say while she's five months, six months pregnant, say, she can just not tell you, go to the clinic, kill the baby, come back. She don't have to tell you nothing. That's what this is about.
This is the feminist movement, brothers. You understand? Go ahead. They also include the right of all to make decisions concerning reproductive, concerning reproduction, free of discrimination, coercion, mm -hmm. and violence. Meaning what? They don't want nobody to say nothing about this thing. We want to talk about it. Next paragraph. Come on. Women's reproductive rights may include some or all of the following. Mm. Abortion rights movements. There it is right there. You see this? Reproductive rights, is all, it all boils down to one thing and one thing only. Abortion, killing, murder. You understand? Sacrificing children to Molech. That's what this whole thing is about. All this. Give me that in Psalms, okay? Psalms 106. You see, all of these things, they just quote words for murder, evil, worshipping of idols, bringing disorder into marriages, destroying the black family, the Israelite nation, because the target is our nation. Read that. Psalms 106, read verse 30, read verse 30, read verse 34. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 34. Go ahead. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, mm -hmm. but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. You see that? But we were mingled among the heathens and learned their wicked demonic works. Read. And they serve their idols. You see that? So they serve their idols, idolatry. You see what? When, when, when we mix ourselves with these heathens, the Lord says, what the thing that gets introduced is idolatry. Okay, read. Which were a snare unto them. Now it's a trap to our nation. That's why now, now our nation is destroyed from within because they are using the black women against us. And black men now, they're becoming gay. They are pushing this gay agenda also. They are destroying the nation from within. Because now you've got black men that are feminists. You cannot make this up. Read. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. You see that thing? That's what this reproductive right is about. Reproductive right is about what? Sacrificing sons and daughters through abortion to devils. Molech. You understand? Read that in Leviticus 18. These, these nations, they, all, they just come with idols. Understand that. Leviticus. No, Leviticus 20. I think that's what I want. Leviticus chapter 20. Read verse. Read verse 1. Leviticus 20 and 1. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, mm -hmm. he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So this was the judgment for uh, abortion because abortion is murder. But now Esau has come up with new terms and said, no, it's abortion, it's not murder. Let's call it abortion. No, no, no. We're not going to call it abortion no more. We're going to call it reproductive rights. You see that thing? Ray. And I will, and I will set my face against that man. Mm -hmm. And I will cut him off from among his people. Because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch. Mm -hmm. To defy my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. You see that thing? Abortion. So guess what? They say, no, don't use the word murder. Use the word abortion. No, don't use the word abortion. Use the word reproductive rights. You understand? Okay, go back to the article. It says abortion rights movement. Go ahead. Read that. Oh, excuse me, sir. Abortion rights movements. Mm -hmm. Birth control. You see that? Birth control. You know what it means when it says birth control? It means have sex and sex and more sex. And guess what? You can just get the morning after pill. That's what they're talking about, birth control. But today, our sisters, they are using abortion as a form of birth control. That's what's going on today in the black community. You understand? Churches every corner, they don't teach the scriptures. They don't teach against that. 
They don't use the scriptures to clean up the community. They just turn a blind eye. You understand? Playing the three monkeys. Read that part again. He says what? Birth control. Birth control, read. Morning after pill, condoms and all that. Read. Freedom from coerced sterilization. You see that? Sterilization. You understand? Ster ster sterilize your womb so that you can have you can have no more babies. That means you can have as many, as much sex as you want. You can be stretched out and all that, but cause what? You're not gonna fall pregnant. And they're only pushing this in our nation, Rick. And contraception. And you have black women pushing this in the, in the minds of young girls in the community. Yeah, listen, they make me sick, you understand? We have a job to do, brothers. We are at war, Rick. The right to access good quality reproductive health care. That, that means going to these slaughterhouses they call abortion clinics to kill our sons and daughters. Read. And the right to education and access in order to make free and informed reproductive choices. That's talking about our teenagers now, our young girls. Because guess what? These black women Barumana giddy activists, they go to the to, to the schools the high schools and primary schools to teach young girls about condoms, how to practice safe sex. Hmm? Give me that in Isaiah 32 verse 9. Because listen, man. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 32. Here's what the Lord said about this thing. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9. Because they are the main ones, especially these sisters, our sisters, our lovely sisters, they go to these high schools and primary schools to push practice safe sex. They've been showing young girls how to use a condom. I mean, listen, read that verse for me. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 9. Read. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Because these black women, they are at ease. They are ones that are pushing abortion, reproductive rights, and saying, no, we are creating safe and clean abortions and all that. They are at ease. They are okay with the destruction of our nation. They are okay with that. Read. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Because they are careless daughters. They are no longer applying the laws of God to be what? To, they are no longer following the footsteps of our foremothers in the past. Who shifra, who poor. Our foremothers that said, hell to the no. We're not going to allow Pharaoh to kill the young boys that are born in Egypt. Read. Give ear unto my speech. They must give ear unto the word of the most. Read. Read. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. Because right now, when you look at the black community, especially our sisters, they are troubled, of course. Read. Ye careless women. Because they are careless women, the Lord is saying. Ye careless women. Read. For the vintage shall fail. Mm -hmm. The gatherings shall not come. Come on, verse 11, read. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. You see, the Lord is telling them again. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Read. Be troubled, ye careless ones. They are careless. Read. Strip you and make you bare. Mm -hmm. And bread sackcloth upon your loins. The Lord is telling them, listen, get your act together. Get it together. You cannot continue to allow your nation to be what? To be destroyed like this. As we are waking up, going to the street corners to wake up, to cry aloud, to bring the nation in. Guess who's the main enemy when it comes to this gospel? Black women who hate what God has to say. Black women who don't like to be told what to do. But they are okay with the destruction of the nation. I'm getting on the sisters this day. Understand that. Okay. Now, let's read that. Um, reproductive what? Rights may also include. Read that. Reproductive rights may also include the right to receive education about sexually transmitted infections mm. and other aspects of sexuality. It goes back to abortion, birth control, and contraceptives and sterilization. Read. Right to menstrual health. Hold on. Right to menstrual health. The menstruation, they happen every month as a reminder because they don't want, they don't want to listen to or submit to the black man. Read and protection from practices such as female gen gen genital, genital mutilation. Okay, we don't advocate for that. Okay, now, 
Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, read that. Because this International Women's Day, Women's Day and all that, it all is, is the brainchild is what? Feminism. Where, where did it begin? In Genesis with Adam and Eve. When Eve listened to the woman, listened to the serpent and brought garbage to Adam. And Adam also, he listened to that. Read that. Women's rights. Women's rights. Mm -hmm. Women's rights are the rights and entitlements claimed for women and girls worldwide. You see, rights and entitlements. Go ahead. They form the basis of the women's rights movement in the 19th mm -hmm. century and the feminist movement during the 20th and 21st centuries. You see that? So this women's rights, women's day, women's month is all rooted in the feminist movement. Go ahead. In some countries, these rights are institutionalized or supported by law, local custom and behavior. Like South Africa is one of them. Go ahead. Whereas in others, they are ignored and suppressed. Because why? They are still traditional, especially near east, near, in near eastern countries like what? Nigeria, the so-called Middle East, which is near east. You understand? They are still holding on to the traditions that are written in the scripts. That's why in Saudi Arabia and all of that, Afghanistan, Iran and all that, they, they don't push that. This women, women's rights movement and all, it, there's no such thing over there. Why? Because America is the one that is pushing all this garbage to the whole earth. You understand? So now when you go to the Bundus and all of that, there's the traditions of the scriptures, they are still being applied, although many of them are diluted. You understand? Because why? The white man is using television to propagate all this garbage in the minds of our people, whether it's in the rural areas, in the castes, or in the suburbs. Go ahead. They differ from broader notions of human rights mm -hmm. through claims of an inherent historical and traditional bias against the exercise of rights by women and girls mm. in favor of men and boys. You see that? So now to hell with the men and the boys. We're focusing on the women and girls, girl power. That's why when, when you look at that, you see that? Who's in the forefront of the feminist movement? The white woman. Mm -hmm. But the white woman, is, she still has her men. The black woman is single and independent and alone. You cannot make this up. Now, this women's movement, right? This, hmm, there's something that I needed to read, actually. Let me see, let me see. Give me one second. Uh, oh, yes. I want you to read that because this is also part of what women's movement, women's rights and all that. Read that. Violence against women. Violence against women, also known as gender-based violence mm -hmm. and sexual and gender-based violence are violent. Now, now, hold on. I want you to stop right there. You see, the way we obviously we don't advocate violence against our sisters. We don't we don't believe we don't we don't advocate for that because it's against God's laws. All that, give me Proverbs 6, verse 12. Okay, let me just shut that down because we don't we don't we don't support that we don't support violence against our sisters we don't support that nonsense okay read that proverbs 6 verse 12 the book of proverbs chapter 6 verse 12 go ahead a naughty person a wicked man walketh mm. in a with a froth mouth walketh with a froward mouth their their speech is not seasoned with salt go ahead he winketh with his eyes mm -hmm. He speaketh with his feet. He does what? He speaketh with his feet. He speaketh with his feet, meaning what? He teaches with his feet. He will kick you around and all that. Go ahead. He teacheth with his fingers. He teacheth with his fingers. He punch you upside the head. Go ahead. Frowardness is in his heart. Mm -hmm. He deviseth mischief continually. Go ahead. He soweth discord. He soweth discord. So... Guess what? We don't support violence against our sisters. But let's read that again now. Violence against women. Violence against women, 
also mm -hmm. known as gender-based violence. Go ahead. And sexual and gender-based violence. Now, what you want to notice is that they say violence against women. Now it says violence against women, also known as gender-based violence. So you see that part right there when it says gender-based violence? Now it's broad. That will include homosexuals, lesbians, and gays in here because gender-based violence. So it moved from, so the feminist movement actually, guess what? The feminist movement is, the, is, is basically the mother of what? The LGBT. Because the LGBT is the next wave of the feminist movement. Understand that? The LGBTQI, whatever, all these pronouns and all that is the next wave of the feminist movement. The feminist movement started with white women who needed numbers, they recruited black women. And as it evolved over the years beyond the 60s, guess what? They, the LGBT community became the next wave of the feminist movement. That's why he says gender-based violence is no longer violence against women. Go ahead. Are violent acts primarily or exclusively committed against women or girls? Go ahead. Such violence is often considered to form hate crime. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Committed against women or girls specifically because they are female and can take many forms. Let's keep reading. Watch this. Go ahead. VAW has a very long history. Though the incidence and intensity of such violence have varied over time, and even today, vary between societies. Go ahead. Such violence is often seen as a mechanism for the subjugation of women. You see that? So it says such violence is often seen as a mechanism for subjugation of women. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Whether in society in general or in an interpersonal relationship. So, Mujol, keep going. Watch this. Such violence may arise from a sense of entitlement. Stop right there. It says violence against women, it says it arises from the sense of the sense of entitlement from who? The man. Hmm. Let's keep let's go back. There's something we read, right? Anybody remember something we read? Yes, sir. We read something about the entitlement. Where did we read that? Come on, brothers. I think it was under women's rights, sir. Okay, let's see. First, first sentence, sir. Okay, read it. Yeah, that's it right there. Read that thing for me. Women's rights. Women's rights are the rights and entitlements claimed for women and girls worldwide. You cannot, listen, the hypocrisy. Listen, give me that in Isaiah 32. You see, the hypocrisy is unkind. You cannot make it up. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 32, read verse 7 now. Hmm. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 7. The instruments also... No, no, no. Verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, that's what I want. Verse 6, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. You see that? Is that the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. They will sit down to come up with sin. Read to practice hypocrisy. You see that thing? So this woman's day, women's right, women's month is to practice hypocrisy. Because listen, it says women's rights are the rights and entitlements claimed for women and girls worldwide. They are practicing hypocrisy. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord. You see that thing? They are uttering error against the Lord. Because this whole thing is about what? Be wanting to be equal or above the man. That's why we went into the book of Genesis. Read. To make empty the soul of the hungry. Mm -hmm. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Because the soul of the hungry, we are the ones that are hungry for the truth. And guess what? We are the thirsty. Guess what? They're still taking the drink from the thirsty. Now, let's go back. Read that. Such violence. Okay, come on. Such violence may arise from a sense of entitlement. Mm, you see that? 
is as such violence is as it arises from the sense of entitlement. But guess we just go through reading that women's rights is about what entitlement. Hmm. Go ahead. Superiority. Superiority. Because guess what? The entitlement and the superiority is talk about the men. Listen, we read the order of the men and women and children in the marriage. Is the most High God, Christ, men, women, and children. That's how that's the that's God's order. We're not gonna go against that. There's no such thing as gender equality. You understand? And it doesn't mean that we abuse our women. No, we love our women. That's why we marry them. What the hell is this? Keep going. Misogyny. Misogyny. They say, because, listen, what we read in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3, the black woman will hear them say, you see, you are being misogynistic. Now, let's get the definition of what it, does it mean? What is misogyny? Mm. Yeah, read that. Misogyny. Mm -hmm. Misogyny is hatred of, contempt for, or prejudice against women. You see that thing? Keep going. It is a form of sexism that keeps women at a lower social status than, than men. Go ahead. Thus maintaining the societal roles of patriarchy. Hold on. The, so, you see that? Thus maintaining the societal role of patriarchy. The Bible is a is, is book about patriarchy. We're not going to go against that. The men are the leaders. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. We're not going to deviate from what the Most High God says. You understand? Read it. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You see that? The head of the, of the Christ, the head of the black man is Jesus the Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the Israelite woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. You see that thing? This is God's divine order. So guess what? Hear what we just read. Read it again. It says what? That's maintaining the what? That's maintaining the societal roles of patriarchy. Mm -hmm. That's maintaining the societal role of patriarchy. Listen, the whole earth is based on patriarchy. The most high God is a man. Exodus 15 verse 3. The most high God is not a woman. God is a man. This is a man's world. We're not going to deviate from that. You understand? And we love our sisters. And our sisters, guess what? They have their role according to Titus 2. And men, we have our role according to Titus 2. Everybody has their role. But guess what? Because the devil, the white man, he's the one that is pushing demonic activity in the nation of Israel. That's why today the black woman thinks she's equal or above the man. And when the man says order in the house, she says, I'm being abused. I'm, is he putting hands on you? No, but he's telling me what to do. Come on, sister. That's what the Bible says. If you don't believe that, then you don't need to be married. You understand? Now read that. Exodus 15 verse 3. The book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. Go ahead. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a what? The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man. The most of God is not a woman. He is a man patriarchy understand that guess what and guess what every nation the in every every nation the chinese the japanese white people the east indians and all of that guess what who's in the front the men but in our nation when we set things in order according to the most High god according to our book they say no you are being misogynistic you hate women you are sexist or all these trigger ways for what for the black man not to stand up. We're not going to listen to the white man no more. We're going to listen to our father, which is in heaven. To hell with the white man. What the hell is this? Man, these things make me sick. We want to keep God's commandments, brothers. Sisters, we will keep God's laws. Because guess what? We need to build our nation back up. We're not going to move to the left or to the right on this one. Hell no. Now, I want to deal with something else now because the same misogyny, right? Here's the word that you never hear. Hmm. Now read that. This is the opposite of misogyny because 
You never hear, you're not going to hear this in the media. They're always making, but they say, no, you are a misogynist and all that. Let's see the opposite of misogyny. Read that. Misandry. 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 So black women, our, the women that say, well, they hate men and all that, they say, no, they want, they want a matriarchy. Guess what? They are misandrists. Yeah, they are misandrists. Because when you say no, the man is the leader. They say no, you are misogynist. Mm -mm. You are a misandrist because you don't want the men to lead. You want to, they, we want to lead side by side. There's no such thing. That's not biblical. We're going to do what the most High God says. We're not going to listen to the white men. Them days are over. Okay, read that. Misandry. Now, dislike of contempt for or ingrained prejudice against men. Mm -hmm. You see that? Dislike of contempt for or ingrained prejudice against men. The male sex. That's why they says sexist. Hmm. Okay, that's it on that. I didn't want to go there. Uh, okay, let me see. Yeah, read that again. Misogyny. Read that whole paragraph again. Misogyny. Misogyny is hatred of, contempt for, or prejudice against women. Go ahead. It is a form of sexism that keeps women at a lower social status than men. Read. That's maintaining the societal roles of patriarchy. You see that thing? Maintaining the societal role of patriarchy. Of course we're going to maintain it. Why? Because it's biblical. Go ahead. Misogyny has been widely practiced for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. It is reflected in art, literature, human societal structure, historical events, mythology, philosophy, and religion worldwide. You see that thing? That our religion is the keeping of the laws of God. And the laws of God says there must be order in the house. We are not going to deviate from that. Why? Because for too long, our nation has been divided, destroyed, single parent household, baby fathers, baby mamas, and all that. The nations, they like that. When we now want to bring our nation back in order, they say, no, you are misogynist. You hate women. You understand? We don't hate our women. That's why we're marrying them. Okay, now, let me see, let me see, let me see. I definitely want it. there's a lot more I want to cover, but I don't think I'll be able to cover all this. So, let me see if I want to continue here, because I've got, we have about two or three more hours of class. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, I'll do part two of this. I'll do part two. There's a lot more stuff I want to touch on. Um, I will outro with this. I will outro with this. Go back to Genesis 3. Genesis 3, read verse 17 again. No, Genesis 3 verse 6. Genesis 3 and verse 6. Book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, mm -hmm. and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. You see that? So now Eve brought philosophies to her husband, Adam. You understand? And she was not supposed to do that, but she went against her husband. You understand? So jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Because of what? Because she did not want to submit herself to her husband. Why? Because she wanted to be equal or above her man. Right? And the law says, because of that, menstrual cramps, you're going to have menstrual cramps every month. And when you give birth, you're going to give birth in pain. Why? To remind you of being disobedient to your husband. Right? 
in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Mm -hmm. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? The woman's desire will be to her husband, and he, the husband, will rule over her according to what? The laws of God. We're not talking about abuse and not. No, no, no. We're talking about what? Rule your house according to the laws of God as it is written. That's it. You understand? Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, mm -hmm. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because our forefather Adam listened to the listen, he listened to his wife which is what today they are pushing in society, for the black man to submit to the black woman. That's not going to happen. We're not doing that. Now that we're waking up, we know who we are, we're going to do what, this, what the Most High God is saying, as it is written. Read. And as eating of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou mm -hmm. shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Go ahead. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So now what you're seeing here is our forefather, Adam, he listened to his wife when he wasn't supposed to. He, re he reports to the most high. But now, he, he, he now because of what has happened in the marriage, the disorder that was brought into the marriage because of idolatry by the woman, now Adam is reporting to the woman. You see this? That's out of order. That's why it's a disorder in marriages. Watch this. Give me that in uh, second Ezra. Go back to second Ezra 7, verse 48. Read that again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 48. Read. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone. Mm -hmm. but, but we all that come of thee. But we all that come of thee. Because why? The same judgment that came upon Adam we also got affected by that same judgment this day. Give me that in Revelation chapter 14. This is an outro, which will be part of part two on the moral Lord's will. Revelation chapter 14, read verse four. Watch this. The book of Revelations, chapter 14, verse four. You know what? Hold that. Give me Romans 15, verse four. Then we're going to go to Revelation 14, verse four. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse four. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written for time were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that thing? So the things that happen in our time, they are written for us to learn. We must not repeat the same mistakes our forefathers did in the past. That's what the Apostle Paul is reminding us of. That's why throughout the letters of Paul, he keeps bringing up Adam and Eve. Why? Because so we don't repeat the same mistake that our forefathers and foremothers did. We must learn. We must do better. Okay? Revelation 14 verse 4. Read. The book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Mm -hmm. These are they which were not defiled with women. You see that? So these, are they, these are they which were not defiled with women. So guess what? As learning what happened in the past, not to repeat the same mistakes our forefathers and foremothers did, guess what? We must make sure that we are not one. We are not going to be defiled by women. What does that mean? Because women, they are the ones primarily that bring philosophies into the marriage. You understand? That bring philosophies to the man. So just like what our foremother Eve did in the past, guess what? But the Lord is saying, these ones right here, these men, the 144, they are not going to be defiled by a woman. Why? Go ahead. For they are virgins. They are pure. Meaning they are pure. They keep the commandments of the Most High God. They are virgins. I get a virgin is not defiled. A virgin, they are, they are, they are, they are what? They are, they, are, they are free from all sin with men. Like our foremother Sarah. She says, I'm free from all sin with men. Guess what? When it says they are virgin, meaning what? They have not been defiled spiritually by a woman and their philosophies that come with them. Primarily. Go ahead. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They follow Christ whithersoever we go. Wherever, whatever Christ says do, we do it. Go ahead. These are redeemed from among men. You see that thing? These were redeemed from among men. Because the 144,000 are men. Read. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. 
You see that thing, all praises to the most high. So guess what? Our job, brothers, is to make sure that we don't get defiled by women. We don't get defiled by sisters. Why? Because sisters primarily, they are the ones that bring philosophies most of the time. That's why it is, that's why the most high God says, get that in Proverbs 8, verse 4. The Lord is dealing with the men first. You understand? That's why when the serpent, the spirit that is in the white man today, did not go to Adam. He went to Eve. You understand? Because he understood that she's the weaker vessel. Okay. Proverbs chapter 8, read verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. Go ahead. Unto you, O men, I call. Mm -hmm. And my voice is to the sons of men. You see that? It says, unto you, O men, I call. My voice is to the sons of men. So in this, in God's movement, the men are the leaders. And the Lord is calling the men first because we are the leaders of the nation the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's why the Lord is calling us first to set things in order. You understand? To learn, to understand how to build the nation, how to organize our people, how to educate them so we can what? So we can move as one, be in the same mind, the same spirit, the same judgment together with our sisters and the children together. That's how we build the nation. This is nation building time, brothers. We must understand that. Sisters too. You must also fall within your roles. You understand? There's multiple classes on YouTube that we put out about the, the role of the sisters. So guess what? You want to learn more? You must go back to those videos and watch and learn some more. Rekindle your spirit in that area so you don't misunderstand what's coming out. Okay? So I'm going to end the class right here. I'll do part two on the moral Lord's will. Okay? Let's break bread this day. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High.